What's up guys, Madacaster here, back again to CMS 18. I got one barn that popped up. I figure let's go check out the barn and if there's nothing good in there, then we can either go to the junkyard or go to the auction, see if we can find ourselves a project. Guys, I hope you're doing well. I really do. I'm excited to see what we've got in this last lone little barn here. And over time, more and more will start to show up, but they are few and far between, it seems, now. And what do we have here? We have a DeLorean DMC-12 carbon fiber with a V12 in it. Wow. That could be fun. I mean, we've done a DeLorean not long ago, but not with a V12, that's for sure. What do we have back here? We have a second generation Corvette C2 Corvette. Oh, this is C1. Duh. Yeah, this is C1 Corvette. Uh, one of those days already, guys. I can tell you that much. Uh, we have done one of these. So, if you want to see that, they're in the uh, backlog of videos. So, otherwise, I'm just going to rummage through this junk, see if I find any more maps. And if I don't find anything cool, then I will see you back at the garage, where we will go elsewhere to find ourselves. A project car for today. Didn't find any barn maps, but we did find a crate in there, and it's always nice to buy those crates. Sometimes they have barn maps in them. Let me see what we get here. Doesn't look like we get any barn maps, but we get some random parts. They say, let's run over to the junkyard. Let's see what they got in the junkyard. Maybe get, maybe find something that needs a lot of love. You know, guys, I'm inching really close to 25,000 subscribers. I gotta take a minute and thank you guys for that. The, the amount of support that you have given me is absolutely, absolutely unbelievable. And I truly, truly appreciate it. I really do. So I just wanted to take a second and say I'm getting really close to 25,000 subscribers, something I didn't think would happen, uh, but it's all thanks to you guys. And maybe this will be the video where we hit 25,000. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe by some miracle I will already be at 25,000 when this comes out we shall see it's getting really close and that's all thanks to you guys so thank you again it is truly appreciated it was looking like there is oh i know what this is this is a car that you guys have been asking about nissan gtr welp it's rough it is really 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 rough this would be one car back from the dead and then look at this car value twenty eight thousand eight hundred, and they want 32,560. It's a big difference. And look at what's left of the motor there. A lot to work with, but a lot needed. We're just going to peek around the rest of the junkyard. I'm kind of feeling like we've got to go with that one. And what is this? Is this one of those Lotus? Yeah, Lotus 77. Hmm. That would be a fun one, too. They want $50,000 for it. That's a little, that's, you know, even though this looks less, that makes a little more sense considering the provenance of these. Not, not to take anything away from the GTR, but that was a purpose-built race car with a lot of history there. What do we have here? Some sort of Nomad? We do. Chevy Nomad Dragster. Oh, I've hit the, some, some sort of mother load in the junkyard today. Again, there's not a lot left here. That would be cool, a dragster nomad. Hmm. If you're curious what the nomad is, it was a, it was a two door. It was in a, a, a lot of the tri five, tri five, fifty five, fifty six, fifty seven Chevrolets. 
there was the 210 models and then the, they had all these different trim lines you could get the nomad which was a two-door wagon had a more of a stylish style roof than the regular four-door wagon or the handyman uh, panel sedan so the nomads are cool they are definitely desirable and to have a, a nomad dragster would be awesome I'd really like that all right here's what i'm doing taking the nomad dragster they're buying that car. Yes. Then we're going to send that over to the car parking. And we are going home with the GTR. We are going to build this car up, get it back on the road where it belongs. It's going to be rough, but it needs to be done. Yes, let's send that to the garage. And guys, we have our car for today. Back to the garage. And here it is. Man, is it rough. It is rough. And I know some people are going to ask, you got the money, why not just buy all those cars and put them in the, in the car parking? Well, that's not so much fun. And the car parking would fill up very, very quickly. And it wouldn't be as fun to make videos not necessarily hunting for cars. Just going to the car park, car parking, and grabbing one that we already know is there. I kind of enjoy the hunt. But man, this thing, yeah, it needs, it needs some work. Poor thing has been neglected. Let's send it on over. I'm not even going to try to get the engine running. Well, it won't run. I guarantee that much. We're going to send it over to lifter A. It's time to get this thing looking good. We'll start with the welder. That's going to make a big difference right off the bat. Let's get that over to lifter A, and then that's going to look prettier and make me feel a lot better about what <laughs> our endeavor that we were getting ourselves into here. And look at that. Just like that. Much better. All right, you can go back. I don't hate that factory color, but I don't think we're going to go with that. It's amazing how much that can, uh, you know, change the look of change the look of a vehicle. All right. So, first first comes the first. There's just so much missing to this car. Let's get this engine out of here. Get it up on the lift. A little bit higher. There she goes, and then we can get up under and start detaching what we need to detach here. Let's get our drive shaft out of here so we can at least just get the running gear taken care of. Get our gearbox out of here. Get up closer. There we go. Clutch release bearing, pressure plate. The clutch plate and our flywheel can come off. We are good to rip this thing out. So much as I'm guessing there's no oil in it because there is no oil pan. How about that? <laughs> Be a little hard to have oil in it with that. Okay, so now we go grab our engine crane. Take it to the lifter A. Pull out. Bingo. Put that rusty old thing on there. Okay, this can go back. And off you go. Okay, let's start with getting this rusty old thing torn down. We'll get the heads off of here. What's left of them. There goes one. And then, oh, we've got a cam gear. It's nice they left us one cam gear. Oh, and a couple cam jabs. Remove this engine head. All right, and then we can f probably flip this thing over. Yeah, that's all part of it. Yeah, probably flip this thing over, and this was this will most likely be the shortest tear engine teardown we've ever done. Get that piston out. Yeah, they don't even have the uh, connecting rod. Or the, you know, wow, there's really nothing under here. Poor thing. And we can get the crankshaft out, and that'll do it. <laughs> That's all she wrote. Well, I'm stoked for this car, guys. This is a car I've been waiting to do for quite a while, and I know I've gotten some questions about it as well. So I was happy I was able to find this today, uh, especially in a junkyard of all places. So sad. All right, I did buy pretty much everything performance that I could buy for this engine. That's for sure. Everything that was available and performance-wise, I bought it. So we're going to see how much power we can get out of this thing. 
we get these pistons in. Little crankshaft bearing cap there. Just six little pistons. So I could talk through this and not have to fast forward, I guess. Because it's not near as many as... Well, last time we had a V12, didn't we? Get this piston in. And it's rod cap attached. Just only two crankshaft bearing retainer caps in this engine. How about that? Get this performance piston in. The rod cap. Then we only got one more to go. And there it is. All cinched down. Perfect. Now we could do our oil pan. And while we're flipped over here, might as well just add our oil filter. How about that? Now we can rotate the engine right side up. And get going on. Where do we want to start? Front? Might as well. Crankshaft pulley. Get that on there. Idler roller A. We got a lot of idle rollers in this engine. Water pump. Another idler, idler roller A. Another one. We have this arm. Get you on there. And then we can put on our performance alternator. I did spring for the performance alternator and performance power steering pump. Speaking of, time for that to go on. And we are on to the heads, which again, are performance. Hoping to get as much power out of this thing as we can, as well as performance camshafts. One and two. Get our retainers here. And our other one. Tighten that down. We're ready for engine head cover A. And engine head cover C on this side. It's B on the other side. The B has the oil filler. Access hole thing. Exhaust manifold, which is performance. It is beautiful, guys. This is a mod. So there are no turbos. So don't go yelling at me about it. It's a great mod. Uh, we love our, our modders, but sometimes you have to give up uh, little things like that to make the mod work right, okay? So I know, I know, it seems, uh, seems blasphemous, but it's okay. Oops, that's not the head we want. That's what I wish they, if, you, if they, the game would pr prioritize the performance stuff uh, th that you buy instead of just the standard. So it knows if you spent the money, you're going to want to put the performance stuff on because I end up tripping myself up like that all the time, accidentally putting on the standard. And see, watch, we go here. Now it'll do it. Now it puts the. <laughs> Wonder why it does that. Very interesting. And then a our camshaft performance again. There and there. And our retainers. All cinched down. These six little bolts. And then I forgot to, you know what I forgot on the other side? Was our performance spark plugs. We'll get them in over here. We will add our performance ignition coils here. All six, four, five, and six. This is where stuff's about to start getting pretty. This thing gonna start coming together like the little jewel that it is. These little V6s are neat. We do a lot of V8s and a lot of V12s on here. It's nice to do a little V6. I mean, I shouldn't call it little. It's little in size, but in real life, the six cylinder and a GTR. It is a beast of a V6. Now see, this is the pretty stuff I'm talking about here. All this polished, chrome, polished, whatever, whatever it may be. Performance fuel rails, got a pair of those. Performance fuel pump, 
or pump, sorry, filter, and then our thermostat back here. So tie all that together, our performance throttle body. And we need to get our manifold over here. And we will finish off the front of the engine. This thing's about done. Quick build on this one. Get our idle, another idler roller, A. Need to get these cam gears on here. There we go. And there you go. Get our serpentine belt. That gives us an opportunity to put the cover on there. Need our tensioner over here. Nice, nice. Other timing cover. This timing cover, the main, I guess, the lower. Another idler roller there. And then our other serpentine belt. And I believe that does it. Oh, nope. We forgot one idler roller B. That to me looks like it. We'll take care of the flywheel, clutch plate, pressure plate, and throw out bearing when we get there. But that is our beautiful monstrous v6 with all the performance parts we can add all right time to move on to let's do our front suspension get that all taken care of see what's missing see what's in terrible shape which so much of it has been already but that's what happens when you find these things in a junkyard i see this car has a battery i'm gonna grab that now and throw it on the charger and start charging that guy up. If it'll take a charge, that's pretty rough. I've never had one that wouldn't take a charge, so I think we're gonna be all right. Oh, time to remove the caliper. Brake pad, brake disc, wheel hub. Get that bearing out of there. Take care of that hub. Front axle, knuckle, cover, upper suspension arm. Probably grab our, yep, we can grab our shock assembly now. Go ahead and undo our front end link. What do we got here? We got our outer tie rod. You can go. Pop that inner tie rod on out. Lower control arm. Out you go. And we will remove our knuckle cover. While I'm here, knuckle cover. Remove our steering knuckle. Remove the rubber bushings while I'm over here, so I do not forget. All right, guys, on to the other side. I'm gonna remove our rubber bushings here, and we can take our whole K-member out. I'm keeping in theme with moving from the front to the rear, I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of this stuff now, and oh, I guess the large intercooler is accessible from under the car, wouldn't you know. I'm just gonna grab this brake stuff here to see if we can repair any of it, and if not, replace it. Looks like that is everything there. We'll go grab that intercooler. I'm gonna go ahead and get the brake stuff out of the way, install all this, the ABS, the ABS module. On you go. And we can do, we can work on our air filters here, air filter base, did by performance air filters. We need the cover and we do need the clips. All the clips on there. They can be a pain. They're just so tiny. Just grab those. Boom. Put it all together. That's what you got. Okay, I'll see what our battery's doing. I'll go grab it. See if it's giving it long enough time to charge. That way, just kind of tidy up, take care of the engine bay, and get it out of the way. Yeah, it's charged. All right. On to the suspension. We've got our front cross member here. Get in a little closer. Put in our rubber bushings. There's one. There's one. Now we can put in our steering rack, our sway bar. 
We are ready to start building on our suspension here. Inner, inner tie rod. Get our steering knuckle. Outer tie rod. Bottom suspension arm. Do our shock assembly here. Fray bar, sway bar front and sway bar. Sway bar front end link. Upper suspension arm. With all the rubber bushings indeed. We are looking good. We get this axle knuckle cover on. Front wheel hub. Front wheel bearing. Brake disc. Pads. Caliper. And then we will be ready for wheels and tires. But we're not quite there yet. We haven't picked those out, have we? Oh yeah, once we get our front wheel of cap in. I was like, why isn't it? There it goes. Okay. Again, must be one of those days. On to the other side, guys. That looks good to me. Done and done. On to the rear suspension. I'm kind of digging these rims. They're not bad. They're not bad. But maybe we could do better. I don't know. Get this drive axle. Okay. Get, oh, wheel hub bearing. Much more complicated rear end than we're usually doing. Of course, when you're all wheel drive, you'll have that. Shock absorber A. Oh, yeah. They want the rubber bushing out first. Then we can remove this arm. Get the lower arm here. Go ahead and take care of our in link. Shot cap. Let's grab that rubber bushing wall right there. Spring. Spring cap. Another rubber bushing right here. And we can grab our lower arm over here. Our small rubber bushing and the knuckle housing can come out. Then on to the other side. And now we can grab our rear sway bar and our whole axle assembly. While I'm here, I'm going to grab the fuel tank. Actually, what I need to get to is the fuel pump right there. Then we can grab our fuel tank and see what we can repair. What I can repair, I will repair. What I can't, I will replace. First things first, let's get our tank mounted. And our performance pump installed. How about that? Rear suspension cross member with our rubber bushings. One there. And one there. Okay. Now we can put on our rear sway bar and throw on our knuckle housing right into thin air. Spin it around here. Do our upper arm. There we go. Rear shock absorber A. End link. Jump over here. Rear suspension arm. Rubber bushing. We can get our rear suspension arm here. Spin around and get our small rubber bushing right there. So we can put on that guy to be able to put our spring, our rear spring and cap back here. Follow that up with the wheel hub cover guy thing. <laughs> our wheel hub here, our bearing and our drive axle. That will get us ready for the brake disc. 
as well as the pads and calipers or caliper I should say in this case that should do it for the, this side of the rear end guys on to the other side You know, looking through all these wheel wheel designs and stuff, I'm, I'm really digging the ones that came on it. They looked a lot like the stock ones. Not not totally close, but pretty close to me. But they do not. They are not the right color, in my opinion. GTR needs black rims. That's just my opinion. So we're going to pull these apart, see if we can repair them. If we can repair them, we're going to paint them. Going with a matte black on each of the rims. That'll look good. Time to mount and balance. Oh yeah. I like it. Take that, put it on the balancer, get that going. I'm gonna get all these taken care of. Let's get these installed. The rear ones will be the 285s, there they are. Oh yeah, that's what I like. And the front ones will be the 255s, right there. Nice little tasteful staggered setup. Moving on to the other side. Let's lower this thing down and install our engine, shall we? Get it lowered. Grab our engine crane over here. Move it to lifter A. Take our engine, carry it over to the crane, and install. There she goes. That can go back. Look at there. Let's put our little engine cover on there. Well, not hood. Not the engine cover. Because I gotta put the hood on first, open the hood. Now we can put our engine cover on. Beautiful. Look at that. Very nice. So let's move on to the body and get rid of this old front windshield. There's really not a lot of glass or anything left. We should take this trunk. We'll take it right over here and see if we can repair it. No, we cannot. So we will need a trunk. Ran over there and grabbed a trunk and uh, I kept I kept the stock Nissan logo. There's a D-badge version. I like the stock logo. I love the stock rear end of this thing. I did, I did change things up a little bit on the front. But the stock rear end on one of these is just absolutely gorgeous. And I don't want to change a thing, really. Put a rear window in. Left tail light. Just the regular. They have, like, the Alteza style or whatever. But I love... This is just an iconic look right here. I mean, that's iconic. I didn't want to mess with it. But on the front, I did take a few little liberties. Got a little bit of a stylized front bumper cover there. I think it looks well, looks good, and some smoked headlights. I think that really ties everything together. It's quite nice. Got a new front window. Put this steering wheel in, which they call a clamshell. It's part of the body on this particular car. Front left door, front left window, and mirror. Now we can do our left body window. This is starting to look like a proper GTR, finally. Get this window in. Side mirror and this body window here. Now, I think that looks... That actually, as it is, looks pretty good. <laughs> but we are going to paint it. Oh, you can still put oil in it with the engine cover on. Good to know. Getting very close. Let's put our uh, transmission drive shaft our clutch assembly all that in here there we go that's what we want so we've got a performance flywheel a performance clutch plate as well as a performance pressure plate and just a regular old throw out bearing i did buy a tunable gearbox because i feel like we're going to need it then I think we are off to the paint booth. 
There we go. Get that done. Uh, I don't know what colors. There's so many good colors, but you know one that really sticks out to me is just the white. I love the white with the black rims. It might be overdone. I don't know. I haven't seen a whole lot of them like that. I mean, yeah, it seems like it's somewhat common. I don't care. Let's put it over into the paint booth and go take a look at some options. Like, I just love that look. <laughs> it looks so good. You can try it in the different shades. That matte finish looks really good. Almost looks like a wrap, which I dig. I dig that look. The pearl works. The chameleon works. That is just too much. Oh, that matte white, especially with that interior color. Look at that shot. Mm, let's do it. Matte white paint car. And then I want to do something. I want to change this up a little bit. Take the car. Move you over to the dyno. Will you start? Cannot start engine. There's something. And I think it was that we didn't put our starter in. Move car over to lifter A. That's fine. I can take care of this thing I want to do over there anyways. Take the hood. Get you out of here. Take you over to the paint booth. Matte black. I like it. Some are going to hate it. Some are going to hate it. That's okay. That's okay. Different strokes for different folks. I dig it. All right. Now, let's see if that was a, indeed a starter, because I don't feel like I remember putting a starter on. And a starter would definitely... Not having a starter would definitely keep your vehicle from starting. You know, that's funny like that. Nope, we don't have a starter. Right there. Get on there. Now let's see if we can send it to the dyno. Move car to dyno. Yes, it goes. That's a good sign. Now to see what we are going to be putting down as far as power goes and what kind of gains we get. I do like the black hood. Hopefully you do too. If you don't, don't go too hard on me. Just my personal taste, yes. So let's proceed with the dyno test. Factory power, 251. That's a far cry from the 500, what, 560 something or 590 something that the actual car does. Let's run dyno, see if we get anywhere near that. Hopefully we do. That would be nice. And up it goes. 411. Not quite there, but you know, that's part of the deal with the not being turbocharged, not having... The mod does not have, sadly, have the turbocharged engine. That's, that's okay. It's still a good mod. Our mod, modders work hard for us, so we can have cars like this. They don't have to be 110% accurate if it's not going to be... You know, imagine if you had the option of not having the car at all, or it being 100% accurate, you know. It's nice to have the car. Alright, let's uh, move it over to the... We can still have fun with 411 horsepower. Move it to there and take care of our interior. I see that we're missing some things here. Let's sit in it, actually. Whew. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, let's get to the interior disassemble mode. Take that seat out. It is in rough shape. I can tell. And go to interior a symbol. Got our new seats in. And that is looking good. Oh yeah. Yeah, that works. What a car. Got a perfect little license plate to put on it. There we go. Very nice. Alright. Time to take this thing out. See what it'll do. Let's have some fun at the speed track. Actually, before we do that, let me do a little pre-tune on the trans. Okay, we do have fifth gear here, and they're going to top it out. Let's add a sixth gear. Bring things in a little more. Let's do 209. I doubt it'll get there, but it's nice to have the option. Now let's head to the speed track. 
Hey, it does sound nice though. Bounce it off the limiter and off we go. Not much slip in there, thanks to our all-wheel drive. Man, that is a gorgeous car. I like the white on black, black on white, however you look at it. Yeah, not quite as much guts as the real one has. I will say that much. Another thing is, uh, it didn't give me a swap option for any other engine. This was the only engine that I could use. And there were probably some people say, why didn't you put a turbo engine in it? Well, that was because there was no swap option to do so. Having some fun at the abandoned airport. Do a little J-turn. Nice. <laughs> this is a fun car. Handles well. I'll say that much. And then it's very grippy with the all-wheel drive, which is very nice. Go in the little tire section here. It's grippy. I can't get it even to start sliding. Hardly at all. Yeah, it just wants to grip. This is a fun car. It's nice to have finally done the GTR. It's a head turner. I think it turned out great. I think it looks gorgeous. But it's time to sell it. See what we make out of this thing. See what kind of profit we're working with. So, go to car status. Can't keep them all. Car value, 270450 With a restoration bonus of $54,090. Compared to what we paid, that's a pretty good deal. We're going to sell the car. $324,540. Absolutely. Cha-ching. Okay, I'm going to clean out my inventory and then do the math, see what kind of money we made here. That fun little job just netted us $245,206. A quarter of a million dollars on a GTR, a fun little GTR build. Not bad at all. That is some good profit. I will certainly take that. Guys... I truly appreciate you watching. I say it every time because I mean it every time. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It lets me know you care. It really helps these videos out too, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Hopefully this will be the video that gets us to 25,000 subscribers. Each and every one of you, I truly, truly do appreciate the support. Guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.